Wednesday is my favorite day. Wednesdays, the show going on the record. And oh my gosh, I am actually maybe a little more super excited today because it's my favorite series, <laughs> Love in America. This couple I met during an unlocking Tampa Bay podcast, Dennis and Misty Akers, who own the Candle Pour. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah, thank you for having us. So, you know, um, actually, for people who may not know, the Candle Pour is in Hyde Park. In, it, that's in Tampa, Florida. We actually have viewers from all over. So thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> I'm gaining momentum. So guys, I want to talk about the candle pour mm -hmm. and I want to talk about the business and all of that. But let's get down to your love story. <laughs> You've been married for six years. Mm -hmm. You have two beautiful children, Sonny and Amelia. And Sonny just turned five, right? He, he mm -hmm. just turned five. So happy birthday, Sonny. We're giving a shout out to you. Yeah, happy birthday, bud. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so again, I met Dennis and Misty. Uh, actually, I met them before I shot the Unlocking Tampa Bay podcast because mm -hmm. I have gone into your uh, place of employment, the Candle Pour, which we're going to talk a lot about during the second half of the show. It was such a great experience for me and my daughter, Sammy, who's 14. Mm -hmm. So with Unlocking Tampa Bay, though, they decided to do a podcast on couples that have businesses together. And I said to you guys then, oh my gosh, you need to be on my Love in America series. Mm -hmm. So, how did you guys meet? That's a good question. Uh, we met in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, uh, she was working with my dad and uh, we flew up to visit them for a race and stumbled upon this lovely little thing. She was actually on a date. <laughs> no! Yeah, oh this yeah. Is where this, is gonna go, this, this direction is going to go that way. <laughs> yes, she was I on a it. date, and oh, then um, we just stayed in touch for a, a long time, and um, eventually she had ended up moving back to to Tampa. So we really kind of got to interact more instead of just like texting and Facebook and stuff. So okay, we have to totally expand on that though <laughs> yeah. that she was on a date. Right, I'm so not throwing around the bus, but I kind of So you were okay. You were working for your dad. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what were you doing? I was a national sales director, so he was the CEO, and uh, I was just there. I lived in North Carolina briefly. Mm -hmm. We just had a lot of work there, and then he was like, oh, I'm bringing my sons. And I was like, great, like I'm going out. Some of the girls are going to be out that worked for uh -huh. us. And then I had this date, and so he met the date, and then we met him. And okay. Oh, wait, wait. That, that was 2008, but though, wasn't we, it? And we stayed connected, and um, I just really – because. His dad was always talking about him and you know his other boys too, but I was like, oh, he sounds really awesome. And then the date obviously didn't go all that great. Well, okay, so, so. But I wanted to ask, but I wanted to say, when you say you're on a date, yeah, a first date. Was, it I was think. okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it was a first right. date. All right, yeah. so you're on the uh, on this first date with this guy. Yeah, you've heard about Dennis mm -hmm. through his dad. So were you looking forward to meeting him, or did, did, had you seen a picture and were you like, oh, he's, uh, yeah, he he's rather pictures in his office, and they all look the same, so it wasn't yeah, really. like the younger and the older. Um, but no, I, yeah, I was excited just to meet because I, I adored his dad. You know, mm -hmm. he was a great boss, um, great mentor, and so I was excited to kind of meet more of him, if that right. makes sense. Right, yes. And then yes. it just transitioned into a friendship and we communicated I think a lot was on Facebook yep. message. Facebook oh no believe me no we're gonna digest this so this is not like oh, okay let's just like breeze yeah. over it first let's give a shout out to your dad does he still have his company uh, he has a bajillion things he's doing <laughs> I'm not gonna lie but we can give him a shout out Dean Acres he, he does a lot watching. of consulting. Wait, um, Dean, Dean Akers? Mm -hmm. um, adjunct CEO Dean adjunct Akers? Adjunct CEO Dean Akers. Oh, okay, wait. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you know who I had a meeting with for three hours yesterday? He, he, he mentioned with something him? about meeting with you. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. that's crazy. You were Dean's son. Yeah. You were one of the five sons yeah. of Dean Akers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, the, okay, okay. I should, the other thing about this show, okay, seriously, guys, okay, this is like crazy. 
when I was worked in traditional news, you know, I would go on in a story or I would go, you know, do my show that I anchored and I would know everything about it. Right now I have so many multiple projects going on. I cannot believe that you are one of Dean Aker's sons. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He's kind of fun to tell. talk to. to get, yeah. <laughs> Usually they're like, are you an Acres boy when we're yeah. walking yeah. through? Well, you know, I, I do have to say your dad is really, uh, honestly, he he's basically taken me on as a charity case. Like he feels like he needs to give back and help. And so I've been one of those people that he has been helping. And I am shocked. You're right, because they do look mm -hmm. so much alike. Yeah. Yeah. And he, <laughs> I, I, don't call yourself a charity case. I think he finds a lot of... Um, uh, pride when people find success that he can just talk oh. to on like a personal level, even if it's not like a true consulting thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he sees it that way. Oh, Dennis, thank you. That's so yeah. sweet. Oh, yeah, he's great so at like challenging people, making them feel better, do better, want yes. to, I think, reach goals that they never thought they could. So he does an amazing job with that. And that's what I really, you know, working for him loved is we were hitting numbers that like if you looked back a year before, you would mm -hmm. be like, no, it's not possible. Wow. And then we were like just crushing them. So. Guys, the crew, will you find out what episode Dean Akers was on? Like during, you know, like oh. so we can announce the next <laughs> part of the show. We got to find out what it is. All right, so because because I want to say he was on episode. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, oh my gosh. That's All right, great. so oh. sorry, we didn't mean to digress. We just came digress. full circle, guys. Yes, so digress. Apologize. So you're on a date, Missy, the first <laughs> back date, to the date. Back to the date. Yes. This is in North Carolina, though, right? This Charlotte, is North Carolina. Yeah. So, Dennis, you walk in and you see her. They say a lot of times that guys know immediately. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? It's not throwing uh -huh. me on the spot. Yes. Her hair is shorter. She had shorter hair back then, a little bit like that. Um, you can so tell him what. I can tell you exactly what I was. Yeah. So okay. okay. Before he met me. Before I met her, um, my dad would always <laughs> talk about her, just being like, um, if I could have ten Misties, you know, this company would be going, just launching off and like. Um, just all this great stuff about her. In my mind, though, I'm picturing, again, I'm in my early, early 20s, uh, and I'm thinking um, a picture in my head of this lady, of an older lady, mm -hmm. just kind of a little, a little wretched, like a little stern, kind of like mean. <laughs> and uh, I walked in, I was like, oh, oh, God, that was wrong. That was wrong, <laughs> indeed. So my first impression was I was wrong. And then, uh, honestly, I think above anything, whatever we talk about this entire show, is it's, it was an immediate friendship, that's for sure. Um, I think we understood each other. We both have kind of a bizarre sense of humor. Um, I'm kind of weird. <laughs> so a little, kind of is an understatement. So I think what we found is a really, really, really fast like ability just to talk to each other. And then from that, things kind of build. Nothing was, nothing was fast in our relationship at all. Wow. So were you living in Tampa at the time mm -hmm. and you were visiting North Carolina? Yep, for the uh, NASCAR race. For the NASCAR race. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you guys connect. The date did not. So d during this yeah, day, it was, just a, it was just a first time yeah. date. In that case, you guys, and, and you're thinking, all right, well, he's fun. Dennis is fun. So you guys <laughs> no, exchanged. No, I mean, not at the time. I wasn't just thinking like, like hey. Yeah, yeah just like, just oh, friends. he was so nice. They were, his brother was with him too. We just, we all like hung out. We had a great time. But uh, it wasn't like a uh, romantic chemistry nope. right away. It was just Like we... you said, it just came into like a friendship of, at the time, Facebook Messenger was like a big way. Yeah. Or, you know, even like I am, um, things like that. And we would just kind of throughout the day just, hey, how's it going? And um, yeah, and we just kept. And then when I got back here, we mm -hmm. went on a lunch. It wasn't really like a date. But then he showed up in a suit, and was, oh, I was cute. That's um, so sweet. So, to give me a tour I was wearing a suit, but I, I think I used to wear a suit for work because I used to pretend to cold call people speaking <laughs> to my dad. Um, yeah, we went to Acropolis, and uh, which mm -hmm. is up by USF, and then I wanted mm -hmm. to show her the Marshall Center at USF because she went to USF. And I they, hadn't seen the campus in a while, and he's yeah. like, "Oh, there's so And it's all so new much, yeah, when new she came back. So when you guys, okay, I just want to. So when you were IMing or you know mm -hmm. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Messenger was that just during the time that he was in North Carolina? But had you come back here? Like how long were yeah, you? Yeah, we would stay in touch. Yeah, for and sure. Stay in touch. And yeah. so then you were coming to Tampa to visit Dennis, or were you more work? So more corporate work. office mm -hmm. was in Tampa, and then I was living in Charlotte, but kind of back and I was traveling all over. So I didn't really have for two or three years. I didn't have a house or anywhere that I called home because I was gone all the time. So it was really just like, like he's you know just the IM and. 
Yeah. Just kind of communicating and getting to a, know one another. I like. had a flip phone. Flip phone. She had a text, <laughs> uh, an iPhone. So she sent me a longer message. You're coming like nine different messages to my <laughs> LG flip phone. It wasn't. It was a while before I got yeah. an iPhone. I think it was but, 08, yeah. 08. Yeah, we talked a lot via text and, um, like she said, Facebook Messenger. And that was when the Messenger was the little thing in the bottom corner. Yeah. It just kind of mm -hmm. pop up. It wasn't that sophisticated, but it was cool. So, so. it was fun. So having like a little buddy. Okay. Yeah, like a friend. And so at, th at this point, then you guys, <laughs> and how long did that go on before you came to Tampa? You can tell I'm a journalist. I have to ask. Him. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I was trying to think of the timing. I, we just stayed in touch for a very long time. Yeah, it was probably like six months to six to nine months. Maybe? See, that's so great, though. You guys yeah. really got to know each other, as you right. said, just yeah. through this conversation. You know, mm -hmm. through these conversations. Yeah. So, did you also talk on the phone or anything like that, or was it just mostly? Think. We did like one or once. I don't times, like talking maybe. on the phone that much. Yeah. Even now, like we're married, I just don't like talking on the phone. Like I can talk to her all night long, but mm -hmm. like on the phone is difficult for me because. Again, I'm animated, and I tend to just let people talk. And if I'm not on the phone, I just get really quiet. And I'm like, um, sorry. So yeah, we wouldn't talk on the phone that much, but we would definitely text a lot. Yeah, I think it's a guy thing to you on the phone. I mean, what I've noticed. I mean, maybe it's not, but what I've noticed is so many men. Like, I can sit there and talk on the phone with my girlfriends for. I got nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, right. I'm not that interesting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, again, it was just. I think the key to our relationship was friendship. Um, you know, respect, admiration, admiration for especially what she was doing. I, I still say I'm a moron, so I don't know why <laughs> she she keeps me around. But um, no, that's how it began. I think that's the foundation. I think a lot of people, their foundations are a lot faster than what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, they just jump to things. It's a lot of a swipe right mentality <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. Um, so I think we were lucky that we didn't have to deal with all that stuff. We it was more organic and it just kind of happened. No one pressured any one of us. If anything, she had to be wary of it because I was the CEO's son. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. So and, you know, you don't want to say she got to where she was, you know, even though she was already there, um, because of this. You, know, you mm -hmm. could never know what people would think about it. So if anything, that was a, a, a hurdle more than than for her. I mean, I, again, I was like. I don't know what to do, but she had actual a career. I was just like starting a career. Yeah. Did you feel that? Were you concerned about that at all? At yeah. I mean, just, and I also didn't want to put his dad in like an awkward position mm -hmm. or, you know, because you don't know the direction that a relationship goes. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to hinder anything at work, you know, because I was still am, but very business focused too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we would go out and like, um, I think he started to realize we were developing like a friendship and that we were doing things outside of like him being there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we would go out and he, I think he got married like pretty quickly after Dennis and I started dating. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, you know, with his wife and yeah. we would you know, do things together. I met his family, so yeah. That's so nice. So when, you, okay, going back then mm -hmm. to that lunch at the Acropolis though. <laughs> so you go on the first date, would, that, would you guys consider that the first date, the yeah. Acropolis lunch? Yeah. Okay, so after that, was it like, okay, there is something more here for sure beyond friendship or was this, Still continuing. The I remember when he, I think I got there first, or I just remember him walking in, and it, the first thing that came to my mind was like, oh no. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, like, you know, I just thought, like, oh, he's my buddy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw him, I was like, ah. Uh. And I remember I ordered salmon, and I didn't, I don't think I ate, but maybe a bite. Like, <laughs> so I was just like nervous, but yeah. That's so romantic. <laughs> Did you know that, that her heart skipped a beat when yeah, you walked in in your before. suit? Oh, that's so <laughs> but sweet. But even then, like, we still didn't rush to things, I don't no, feel. Like, no. We would still go out. Um, I just knew I was like, uh, it's the yeah. potential's there. There's something special. Yeah. And she would fly into town. We were notorious for going out, and then um, we would do cab rides back because she didn't have a place to live. So we'd always go to hotels just because, like, oh, we're going to hang out. But we would always joke around with the cab driver who'd make up <laughs> stories about us. Do you remember that? Yeah. We, a lot of them say, oh, like, we're married, we're, we're just married. We just make up shit. But, oh, I'm sorry. Make no, it's up okay. Stuff. That's what I love about a podcast. Uh, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, I forgot about that. Man, we had a lot of those types yeah. of nights where we, and then we would just talk. We'd talk for, uh, again, like, she had a career, live. so I'd talk to her yeah. five in the morning and be like, I hope her day is good tomorrow. <laughs> you know, again, we, we, we just connected on that level um, before funny. anything, so it was cool. And I lived, so my sister has six kids. Congratulations. And, uh, That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's what a blessing. So I lived with them, kind of like when I would travel mm -hmm. to Tampa, I would stay with them. My mom also lived at the time in Palm Harbor. So I would 
just kind of go back and forth, but I was at her house a lot more mm -hmm. because, you know, my nieces and nephews were there, but then also it was close to work. And so he, you know, we would go there sometimes and just hang out and sit on the porch and talk and get yelled at for being loud. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but it was fun. It was really, it was fun. So when, so when, so when you guys first started dating, dating then, it's actual dating, mm -hmm. um, how long was it after that Acropolis lines, would you say, that you actually started dating? I should have done some cliff notes before this. I know. Here. This is so again. It was 2008 when we met. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we we definitely like dated for a while, and then we had a little. We took like a two year break. Break. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. So oh, now, now okay. that part of the story is actually probably more interesting because we did take that break, and honestly, yeah. I mean, I was 23, and. I was, I, I'm a wanderer, you mm -hmm. know, kind of like mm -hmm. she jokes, like if, if we weren't married, I'd probably be living in a van on the side <laughs> of a cliff somewhere. So, you know, it was two years of, I, I just kind of wandered and, and it was, that's just what I did. Uh, went around the country and went around the world. And then the way we met again, this is, I mean, this you can't so really romantic. argue it. Like, this is so right, romantic. Right. You, you, guys found yeah. e you guys found each other back. So, you found back. We well, did. We did. We he did. was about to move to Denver, yeah, and I, I hadn't really seen him. Mm -hmm. I had just gotten back from being in Denver for 10 days, and I was going to move back, back out. Um, and I was in my apartment next to, you know, Howard Avenue? Yeah. Okay. I so, live in Hyde Park. I mean, I'm like, you know, very familiar with that area. So I was in, there's a house off of a street called Westland, which is one street mm -hmm. over to the east of it. And I lived in a little house behind that house. And that night, my buddy came into town. I just worked like a 12-hour shift. And they're banging on my wall to go out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I'm not going out. I'm exhausted. I had to work the next day. And they text me that one of my friends from Colorado, who's never in town, was there. So I'm like, OK, I'll go out and grab a beer. Uh, we walk from my place to World of Beer. And I walk in. I see her. I'm like, oh, god <laughs> damn it. Oh my like, gosh. What am I going to yeah. do? So then, but then, I had seen him, I would avoid, he would avoid. Right, you know, just, right. I think okay, there because, was just something there. And it, okay, can, could I ask though? Sure. When you guys had broken up, yeah. were you brokenhearted? Were you brokenhearted? I mean, yeah. you were brokenhearted, mm -hmm. right? But sometimes, it, and it's so hard, believe me, we, I've been there, right? But you've got to let someone go yeah. in order for them to come back. Oh my and gosh. People so, would say that, and I was like, I you hate I it. I hate this. Oh, I hate like, it. Oh, I know. It's like, why would you let someone go? You know, but then it, it's true. It's like he needed the time and. Oh, and don't you hate that one too? Yeah. Oh, time heals everything. Guys tend to. <laughs> like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But it's true. I mean, time does. And then if it's meant to be, it's All meant right, to be. I'm going to go out <laughs> okay, no, this way. You guys can do <laughs> no, this. No, but I love this. But this really is meant to be. So, uh, all right, so she's in World of Beer. Right. So you I see in. her and I'm like, oh. Dang it. And then I'm like. Yeah, but there was no avoid. Like the crowd yeah. was coming and I'm looking and I saw his friend and I was like, and then I see him behind and I was like, oh. <laughs> so then so. I just said, whatever. I gave her a big hug and then we started talking and then now we're here. Yeah. yeah and from out. that point, we just continued. Yeah, today, that part went pretty so. quick. Like yeah. there wasn't like we text, like we were, we, we just figured out pretty quick that we're just going to make this work. So. Yeah. Okay, so we had Andrew Warren, who's a state attorney, on with his wife, mm -hmm. Alex Warren. Adorable couple. They were actually, we ran it on, uh, on Valentine's Day. But this is so reminiscent of that, just because, you know, they were friends, and then, you know, and all of a sudden you get reconnected, and it went very fast after mm -hmm. that. Like, like, at that point, I you, think once you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, like, you're missing someone, and, and then it's just the confirmation when you can tell there, were, there was something different with him too mm -hmm. at that time and we had like throughout I would say in the two years we had like a couple of letter exchanges things like that but it was letters like written letters, letters. Yeah. Yeah. that's so Hand romantic letters, now. Yeah, yeah, that's a D yeah. makers thing right? yeah. <laughs> that's a total D makers thing <laughs> no, we definitely like that was our we didn't yeah that was basically our, our means of conversation was like I think like she said two or three letters and that was it mm -hmm. So when you guys got reconnected then, and when you said pretty fast, how fast, and how did you propose? Oh, we didn't get married fast. Oh, we yeah. dated for a while, um, but we like moved in. I'm pretty easy to move in. <laughs> I think I moved in by mistake. Yeah. I, so I had, I had a toothbrush. And, and He's then, the wanderer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I was like, oh, I guess this is all the stuff I have. So <laughs> I just kind of started staying there. If anything, I was like, kind of like a bum. I was shacking up. I was like, I'm oh, sorry right. for ruining your nice little place here. <laughs> But I got a closet eventually, and um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we dated for a long time. We, we ended up moving on to Davis Island for a little bit, and then we took a trip. Uh, what was that trip? It was Colorado, then Colorado, Cal California. and then we did the coast. 
Southern coast of California yeah. up to San Francisco. My best friend lives there. So I got fired from my job uh, <laughs> with my brother. And oh, right. it was, here's a, fun, here's a fun story. I was going to quit that job that day, but they fired me. Oh. So then they paid me two weeks, you know, so I got, I got paid two weeks to, 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 quit, to basically, I was going to quit, but they fired me, so they paid me more money. It was great. Um, so I took that money, and then um, I had it there, and I'm like, well, I finally have enough money to buy a ring. Oh. So, which is not a good sound investment no, when you, you think what? about it, like, that's all my money. But, but it goes uh, to, like, things, all my things can yeah. happen for a reason, so you get fired, you get right. the severance. So I, buy, I, I call my mom, I get a ring, and then we had never talked about getting married. Ever. Yeah, no. Not, not once. Really? Uh -uh. She wasn't like that. This is the ring I like. So here I am staring at rings going, okay, um, uh, that one maybe. You know, I had no idea what I was yeah. doing. Um, so I put the ring you in my bag. your mom? Yeah, I texted my mom and I sent, a t sent her a picture and she was cleaning and she goes, I'll be there right now. And she, <laughs> you know, like, Mabel Burns, the Burns something. family. Yeah. On, they have a yeah. jewelry store in Kennedy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went there and so we do that. And I get that purchase, which is, uh, you probably don't have this feeling, but as a guy, when you buy a ring, you're like, well, I have to hide it. And like, it's like burning. You're like, uh, she's going to find it, or I got to do this. Let's get it over with. There's like anxiety around it. So we go to Colorado. I don't propose there. I have it in my bag. Well, we were going to go to Napa, so I figured that would be a good idea. Yeah, you know? it's so romantic. Napa yeah, right, wine. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, so wine I, country. I got the, the ring in my photo bag. It's like a book bag. Um, and we decide we go to California now, and we're driving up the Pacific Coast Highway. I don't know if you've ever done that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. Yep. So we're doing that, and it's basically a 13-hour drive we're doing that day. Um, so we're going. It's beautiful. We're going up and down the hills, and she asked me for a phone charger. So I go, it's in my bag, and it's a lime green phone charger. And if you open my bag like this, if you miss it, you're blind, uh -huh. obviously. I didn't find it. So, She's reaching back there, and it's been like two minutes. I'm like, what is she looking for? And I look, and she has her arm all the way in the top of the bag where my ring is. And I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? She's almost yelling at me. And, and she, I was like, I... And she's like, you don't have to yell at me. Like, and I'm like, oh, my God, I just yelled at her. And I was like, because I was so nervous she was going to find yeah. it. Yeah. So we're driving, and I'm just like this. Driving, I'm like, what do I do? Like, how do I fix this? How do I just snapped at her, and I wasn't like mean, but like, mm -hmm. I've never I even mean, raised you just my never voice. Ra yeah, it was weird, and I was like, just okay. Like, yeah. dude, like, what's, and what's going nothing on? Nothing was even remotely on my mind, like that. That was a possibility to be like, oh, no. you know, like I clueless. I had horrible clothes on. But that's when I got the idea. So we're <laughs> driving, and we we're playing. Would you rather? Mm -hmm. you know, okay. Would you rather do X or yeah. Y or whatever? <laughs> And in my mind, I, I'm like, I got this, because I'm horrible at Would You Rather. I'm really <laughs> okay. bad at would you, would you Rather. So we're driving, and we pull off the road at this one little sp spot. It's not a normal pull off. Like, you can't, like, I know where it is, just because I know where it is. Mm -hmm. But I, I walk out, and it's just like the cliffs are cascading down. Big like, it, it has, like, these flowers everywhere. But again, it's not a normal pull off. So it, it was just random. And I'm like, this is a good place. So uh, she is walking, taking pictures, or kind of taking, like, looking around. And when she walked back, I said, would you rather be my girlfriend or my wife? That's oh, my gosh. Right. <laughs> but I did a good one. That was a good would you rather. And I, I quit. I quit after that. I'm so, okay, I showed the control room is like, sit still. Because I oh. had, that is so Yeah, romantic. I turned around, and he was on his knee. And I was like, oh, my gosh. What? Like, yeah, is this so happening? And he's like, you know, has tears. And so and you have it was cute. You yeah. have tears in your eyes. She has tears in her eyes right now. Yeah. It was oh. special. It was really cool. But I've never so. played would you rather ever again. <laughs> So, yeah, he, he won. <laughs> and now, so you guys have known each other for 14 years, right? Uh, Carry the one. Oh, eight. Know. So, 20, 13. Th uh, 13, because this is 2021. Almost, yeah. But married for sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, okay. Look, I went 23 minutes without going to a break, but so we're gonna go to a break. And then number 23, I love the, okay, so this is totally a yes. sign because 23 is my daughter's birthday. So whenever Aww. I see 23, oh, oh my gosh, it was just 23, 23. <laughs> this is, okay, this is, okay, oh yeah. Oh, I, this is, okay, we're gonna go to a break. We're gonna go to our new studio and we're gonna talk about your business okay. too. And the, the romance, of candles. I think we need to name a candle at a... Aww. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Come up with oh, something. my gosh. Yeah. Okay, guys, we'll be right back. <clears throat> Stay with us. I'm Serena Fazan, a journalist, producer, and podcast host. With the background in television news, I know how much time and talent it takes to produce a broadcast quality production. But no more. Red House Streaming offers a simple 
cost-effective method for capturing live action and streaming it in real time to YouTube, Facebook, or any other website. From single camera shoots or multi-camera productions, conventional or virtual sets, and from the state-of-the-art Red House Streaming Studios to remote locations, the professional crew at Red House Streaming, backed by the technology and reputation of CP Communications, allows you to produce more content at a lower cost and with little to no engineering required. That's why my podcast, On the Record with Serena Fazan, is streamed live from the Red House Streaming Studios each week. Contact Red House Streaming today at 800-762-4254 or online at cpcoms.com to learn more. I'll see you in the studio. So guys, don't you love this studio too? I mean, I how know. cool is Set this, change. right? Set change. I mean, never, this is fun. We probably we probably should have started in the studio maybe with this relaxing conversation. No, I my heart is still skipping several beats. I'm so glad I wore the color pink today too, you no. know, like red, pink, the colors of love. Mm -hmm. When is your wedding anniversary? Uh, May 2nd of 15, 2015. 15. Mm -hmm. So 6 years, six years. We've had six some years. pretty romantic anniversaries oh with gosh. a couple at the candle pour. <laughs> oh. Uh, a pandemic. Pregnant. <laughs> pregnant, <laughs> a lot of pregnant ones. <laughs> I think was in this the our our first anniversary where you could we could like celebrate it together during the pandemic and have wine? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. because, yeah. Between I mean, kids and work and, and everything. Right, I mean. And then the new business. We opened yeah. in April, late April, so May 2nd was like week two, I think. When uh, mm -hmm. Crazy. We like, yeah, and that's what I want to talk about. And we actually have video, actually, of the candle pour that they're going to um, share. So. Glad I wear my fancy socks. Look at this. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm glad I'm wearing socks. This would have been embarrassing. All right, keep going. So tell us, okay, so tell us about the candle pour, and I love the concept. Mm -hmm. And again, now hearing your love story, gosh, I even love it even more. So yeah. tell us about it. Uh, the candle pour is a custom uh, candle experience. Uh, our goal is to help you create your own scent, and that scent can go into any of the products that we have. One of the main things we do is candles, but we can also do flameless items as well. So if you have someone who doesn't like candles, that's okay. <laughs> um, the idea exists because we wanted to bring have a, a business that brought people together, it was social and tactile, um, and something that, believe it or not, Amazon can't take over yet. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted something that could survive, has longevity, and it's a candle. People love candles, they've used them for as long as, I mean, thousands of years they've made candles. So we just enjoyed that idea and we enjoyed making it an experience because I didn't realize candles were this big of a deal <laughs> until we started. I had a friend I've known for 20 years mm -hmm. And he, when we open, comes in and goes, I love candles. I'm like, what do you mean you <laughs> love candles? He goes, I, I've, never, I've never seen a candle at your place. He goes, well, you're not a girl, dude. <laughs> so he has a closet full of candles, and he just loves candles. And so he comes in, he makes them. So that when I heard that, I was like, okay, maybe there's more to this than I think. And then there's really people, it's kind of like a candle addiction. They have closets full of candles, and they come in. And they want to make them for their friends. They want to bring their friends because it's, now it's their candle. It's not a candle they can purchase, mm -hmm. you know, buy one, get three free kind of thing. It's like that's their candle. So it's cool. That is great. And so mm -hmm. when was the idea born to open the candle for? I know you, you, just for my clarity, like when was it actually born to, to open a business surrounding candles, would question. you say? It was probably around 2017-ish. It is and I was just looking to start something and, you know, I was doing consulting and just tired of the travel and we knew, you know, we had our son, you mm -hmm. know, we were just looking to... Cute little Sonny. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yes, he's awesome. Um, but yeah, we were just looking to do something and then I wanted to start a business, I knew, and I wasn't sure if, like, Dennis would be in interested. Mm -hmm. You know, it was candles, I didn't think, but then when we started to, like look at the potential, what we would need, you know, his marketing background, he's amazing with photography and, and all of that. And so we knew we would need that. And he, he was on board and we just started making them in the garage and they were horrible. Yeah, we bought but, a melter and they were really bad. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, you can mess up a candle. I mean, yeah. There's just a lot that goes into it and a lot of equipment, it's messy. So that was like something that was reassuring to us is people aren't gonna come to the candle pour and then go home and just never come back because they can do it at home. Mm -hmm. You can't, it's just different. 
And so knowing that that was not going to be a factor was reassuring to us of like, yeah, like this is horrible to try to make candles at home. It's messy. It gets everywhere. Mm -hmm. The oils are expensive. So we were kind of excited at the same time as being <laughs> frustrated. No, but it is such a great, it, it's so amazing how some ideas are born, right? And then it really translates into such a successful business. I love your location too in Hyde Park and you guys are expanding. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, that's how successful it's been during a pandemic. Yeah. We've, we've had a lot of support from the community. Um, and I always push that back to the staff. The staff treats people correctly. If you, if you treat people right and you really appreciate them, I, I feel like it comes back. And then the pandemic was a perfect example of that. Uh, wholesale and online orders kept us alive. And once we reopened about five months later, uh, after we shut down, uh, People just kept coming in, and they were willing to wear masks during the experience. Mm -hmm. So you're smelling oils through masks. Um, we did that for about ten months. Wow. Because um, it is still. I mean, you could still, you could still smell through the mask, believe it or not. But um, it. Uh, <laughs> that was amazing. That was a lot. I, I, I love it. We've got to share what, what Beth did later. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll share what just happened. Don't you worry. Um, but yeah, so. We, were, we just had that support come in, and once we are getting back to kind of normal now, it was just, it's just very humbling to see, like, on our watches, we'll get reservations to our watches all day long. You're like, wow, wow this is just crazy, because mm -hmm. we never operated on reservations at all. Mm -hmm. We were always walk-in. Our business mm -hmm. was walk-in, make a candle if you feel like it. Like, that was how it was set up, and it was doing a good job. Uh, and then we had to get creative the five months that we were shut down, so that's when the reservations came in, the limited capacity, and... Um, Honestly, we, I don't think we've had a slow day since we re reopened. Like our Wednesdays are as busy as our Fridays. Wow, that's so great. Now, how many, how many scents can you choose from? How many scents do you, do you guys offer? We have just over 100. So at any given time, around 105, 110. And then with the holidays, just add about 20 to 25. So people can sit there and choose all their scents. And I have experienced it. I loved it. I went with my a girlfriend of mine, in fact, um, for Christmas, bought me a gift card to, to ha share that experience. Mm -hmm. And it was the greatest thing that I did with my daughter. And I do love candles. So I recommended it to another friend of mine, Judge Michelle Sisko, who happened to be also on this show. And she took her, kid, her daughter and a bunch of friends there for a birthday party. Um, so... Can you choose as many scents as you want in your candle, or how many scents would you recommend to put in a candle? We usually say, there's not a limit, but we usually say two to four, just so it doesn't get so mm -hmm. complex that you're not, like, you're losing the ones that you really like and want to come out when you're burning it. So usually two to four is a good, like, the magic number. And tell us, give us some tips, because I had no idea. I love that card you give mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. One of the tips that you have on there is, so once you create the candle, People come back to pick up the candle, right? Is it the next day? I can't remember. Two hours. Two hours. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dennis told me this, is that, so you should not light the candle for how long? Technically 10 to 14 days after we poured it and it's set. So the full cure takes about that long. Wow. I, yeah. I'll, I'll make hints, like I don't get mad at you if you light it before that, but if you want true potential mm -hmm. from the candle and get that the optimal like heat throw from it, you, you definitely need to let it completely cure. And you'll notice if you, if you take that home, it'll continue to like compact itself a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, the oils and the wax need time to bond. Mm -hmm. And so the, the longer you wait, it's just going to be a little more potent. No, I honestly noticed that because I should have read the card that you guys, <laughs> and I didn't. And I noticed, in the, so the first candle smelled great, but the second candle, I noticed that, wow, I, I said, well, I was thinking, was it the scents? What was it? But it's because you just let it sit. I just let it sit. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And people will notice too, like if they're like, oh, it, after like the second burn, it really started to get more potent. And it's usually just because of time of how, waiting. How long should you, how long should you let the candle uh, stay lit? Usually, depending on the size, but like a two hour period once it's burned, the first time you want to let it pool all the way across, meaning like totally molten, um, liquefied again, mm -hmm. and that'll let it, when you do burn it, it prevents from like tunneling. And so you're not going to have like just a little wax pool right. and then, so it tunnels in. So yeah, every time you burn it, you should let it pool across. So usually the first burn, three hours or so, three to four hours, depending on the size again, and then after that, around two hours is a good window to like get the most out of it so it doesn't burn, get too hot, and then it's 
mm-hmm. you know, burning faster. And Do you cut so. the wick every time, too? Are you supposed to cut the wick? You're supposed to. So, yeah, <laughs> after you, you burn it and it, and it sets, uh, you'll have, like, those little uh, balls that form and things like that. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to trim the wicks to a quarter of an inch before you light it again. So it controls the size of the flame. It controls how close the flame is to the wax, things like that, to make it burn properly. And it helps it burn cleaner. If you have uh, candles that get very sooty, a lot of times mm-hmm. that, that top causes that soot. Yeah, you'll notice smoke, and if the yes. candle's smoking, then it's, you shouldn't burn it. You should probably blow it out and then trim the wick. And trim the wick, mm-hmm. okay. And I know you guys would never throw any other businesses or anything you know, under the bus, but I just want to ask, because people are very curious about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, I am like, okay, how much, how, how much do people pay for a candle at? Um, Ours range from 25 to 55. We have four different sizes, mm-hmm. so there's a couple in between. But the smallest, a standard 8-ounce candle, um, $25. And then we have a large 3-wick. It holds about 30 ounces of wax, and that's 55 And it's bleamy. I, I love it. Ev- there's no charge to sit or anything like that. That's just You're just paying for what you make. For what you make. Mm-hmm. So, and again, I'm not going to throw any stores for the end of the bus, but you know, sometimes you, you go to some of these, um, y- you know, places that are great. I, maybe I, I will say home goods because I do <laughs> love home goods. I mean, you know, you go in there and they have a large <clears throat> candle section or you go to Yankee Candle or whatever. What is the difference? I mean, those, and I'm not even going to, Yankee Candle or, or what, th- that's a specific candle store, but right. sometimes, you know, you do go into some of like Marshall's, CJ Maxx mm-hmm. or whatever, and uh, do the, uh, what's the difference between those candles and something like your candle? I know your candle is very, very unique, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ours are custom, so mm-hmm. that's the main difference. It, it, and it really just depends on the brands. There's some brands that pride themselves, um, you know, on ingredients. We use premium oils, so we're trying to get the cleanest, you know, our wax is, we're trying to get the cleanest burn. Um, you know, while allowing someone to make a custom candle. But there's great candles out there. I, I still buy, you know, there's some companies that I still, like, I just love the blend so much that I'll, you know, go. it sounds weird, but I'll go out and splurge and buy a candle every once in a while. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of great candles out there. What we love about ours is that it's it's custom. So, like, when you mm-hmm. come in, this becomes your signature scent. So yes. everybody that leaves, you know, unless they just do a single scent, goes out with their signature scent, which is really neat. So we we like like the memories and, mm-hmm. you know, when you're with your daughter on a date, whatever, whoever you're with, you kind of like remember that as, you know, being with them. Or you can go like for a vacation and then you try to create something that reminds you of that or special yes. time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she mentioned dates, like it's a great first date. Uh, totally. Breaking the ice, mm-hmm. you know. Instead of sitting down and having to drink and eat, you can you can create something, and you can learn from that person their preferences, and you kind of like it's a little stories there. Um, and our staff works through the whole time, so they're also going to be helping just at least ease what's going on. You know, we want to make sure you're comfortable when you're with us, that you're not worried about if it's going to smell bad, because there's a little bit of selfishness with <laughs> us because we put our labels on everything. Yeah. And we don't want you taking home and lighting something and people going, ooh, where'd you get that? Mm-hmm. That's gross. <laughs> so we, we do our best to keep it nice yeah. and um, blended. But if you want a bacon candle with cannabis and whipped cream in there, <laughs> I'm not going to stop you, but I, I will warn you. Well, yeah. it is. it truly is an amazing experience. And I would encourage people not only, you know, to go to the candle pour for this amazing experience, but also, again, also plugging the Unlocking Tampa Bay podcast because we spent time, spent time in the store. Mm -hmm. So as we wrap up the show, I wanted to say with Beth, um, who was, your dad was on episode 74 and Misty, I have to say, this is so, so Beth is amazing. She's going to be like, don't talk about me on the show, but Beth Weber is amazing. She's our uh, videographer, our special projects videographer. And when I was doing the Unlocking Tampa Bay podcast, Mm -hmm. she's like, shoot, you know, I don't have enough video. So I'm like, I was in Hyde Park. I'm like, oh, well, I'll go shoot it, you know, because I didn't want her to come from Pinellas County. Speaking of your husband, though, (laughs) talk about. So she doesn't know this. She's finding out right now on the record. (laughs) I send her these clips. She's like, wow, you did a really great job. I just took the camera from you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So you were met at all the people doing. Well, yeah, so that, there I, you go. I tend to do that. Well, and it's funny you say that. And it, it will bounce back at the candle board. That was part of our, our guerrilla marketing when we mm-hmm. opened. It was um, every person that came in, we would, we would take a camera. And I had my camera. And I, would, I don't like saying it this way, but I would shoot the group. And uh, when you would do that, 
I would distribute the images to them. It had mm -hmm. nothing to do with us. We didn't share them on our own personal mm -hmm. things. But if we could do that for every human being that came in, you could control the imagery that went out. And they would share it, and then when they would share it, people would see what they're doing. It looks fun, but it also looks like a professional image. So they yes. share a positive, mm -hmm. bright, uh, ex properly exposed image. Um, and we did that for, I mean, at least the first nine months straight. And that, I would say it's, it's the, the community that's helped our marketing, where if we treat them right, like I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. and we did stuff like that, we go above what we should do, that people come back. I, people come back multiple times a month. People come back when any family member visits. They say, well, I bring them here because it's like a nice start to a day in Hyde Park, or they feel comfortable because they know the staff is going to treat them right. You mm -hmm. know, we, we want to make sure that we treat people right because that's, that's our business. See mm -hmm. how much we're learning. I mean, marketing tips. I mean, what a great marketing <laughs> that tip. That was real marketing. That was, yeah. that was just like, oh, we don't want to really spend money on marketing, so we're just going to, I guess, use what, me for that. And I was okay with it. And I'm like, I have a purpose. No, yeah, but it's he great. he does such an incredible job with yeah. getting. And then his whole thing is put your phone down because he wants to capture right. together. You know, if somebody's mm -hmm. taking a selfie or whatever, they're, they're losing a little bit of that experience. And he's like, I promise you'll have the best pictures. Let me know what you want take it so that's that's nice and it's that was amazing with him is like our social media has been yeah you know, pretty good because we we do control and when people if you have a great photo of yourself uh -huh. you'll share it you know right. if it's not great you're probably never gonna show anyone okay seriously I mean I, so many surprise moments you know in the show I mean I, the, the, you know the whole breakup the thing was yeah. the, again this is unscripted <laughs> unedited that's why I never script the whole breakup thing the fact that you're Dean Aker's son the, 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 the thing about the game and proposing mm -hmm. you guys are amazing Aww, thank you. we so appreciate it. okay so we as we wrap up I always ask for this love in America series and you guys have been giving advice throughout the show what advice would you give to couples in love out there. Couples in love? Yeah, who maybe have, you know, couples in love and also what makes a successful marriage? Oh, man. Um, what do you think makes a successful that's a, marriage? That's a deep one, huh? I think respect, patience. Like, what I love about, like, him just talking about me now, like, those are just things that are very nice to hear, and I think complimenting your spouse, your girlfriend, whatever it is, is it, it means it goes a long way, and it's reassuring that, you know, that I'm the person that he wants to be with and <sighs> likes to just talk to and so that I, I think patience respect and just being nice <laughs> yeah. wow you're gonna have to follow that <laughs> I think people um, misunderstand they, they say love and, and a lot of people are in love but then they do things to people that they shouldn't do if they're in love with that person they w wouldn't so if you respect that person if you admire that person um, if you, again, just appreciate the human being, you're not going to do something dumb. You're not going to be, just, there's a lot of bad things that people do and they don't realize and they do it. And they're, oh, but I love you. If you loved them, you wouldn't have done that. So for us, again, our foundation is more friendship, trust, um, and then complimenting. We, she's polar opposite as far as being organized and things like that. I probably annoy the heck out of her because <laughs> I'm the guy that like, will walk over her shoes <coughs> over and over and not see him. I literally won't even see him. And then she'll come walk by and pick him up. I'm like, ah, oh, I should have picked those up. But he recognizes it. And that's what, like, I would miss I've gotten much the socks better. on the floor. I'd miss the shoes better. if he I've wasn't there, better. you know. Yeah, so, I've like, gotten much better at picking up. Yes. Yes. You have worked very hard. I've worked very hard. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's just little things like that. And then, I mean, like she said, patience. Um, you're in for the long haul. It's not like, you know, if you're, something's going on, you just have patience and talk and figure it out. And... I don't know. That's kind of what we've been doing. So, good job. Well, High you five. guys are great, amazing. <laughs> so proud of you both. And I think, for me, a huge takeaway too is if love is meant to be, it is meant to be. Yeah. yeah. You will find each other. Yeah. yeah. Timing. Yeah. Timing is too. But yeah, it's. I think. Timing. It circles back somehow. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, you Dennis and Misty us. Acres. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. Again, thank you again. Thank, thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. Have a great Wednesday. Um, and we so appreciate your support. You can find the show on multiple media platforms. I am so appreciative of this graphic. The guy <laughs> always was there. I'm like, wow, I'm on all those things. But anyway, yeah, so there I am. Um, it'll be available on all podcast channels on Thursday. But once again, guys, Thank you so much yep. Thank you. for um, joining um, us here on the record. And I will be sure to be in the candle pour very soon. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Bye. for having us.